Uh, good morning. Quite a windy morning here in the Shed of Dreams. Um, yes. Uh, just a quick update on the pump. On the last video, you'll see that it's running, and I said that I wanted to just leave it overnight with the fuel switched off and make sure there was nothing in the float bowl, which would suggest that this is leaking. Um, I've just checked it. There's nothing in the float bowl. So far, I'm concerned that's all good. Anyway back into the shed of tidiness right today's job oh, for fuck's sake. come on now right um the spark plugs and um this move me telephonic communications device the um sparking plugs and the oil filler cap <laughs> from uh, nibbler have arrived from wimoto um yeah, pretty much next day again. Uh, so top marks for Moto hashtag um, sponsor the channel. Um, yeah, oil caps an original Kawasaki one. So um, I don't know how the price compares to the Kawasaki website because I didn't look because I knew a Moto stock to them. No idea it was an original though. All I got to do is take the old O-ring off the old oil cap and fit that. Jim, keep the fucking camera steady. Anyway. Um, Voided the plugs, these are the correct plugs for ZX10 CR9E. In uh, Europe and the UK, we use resistor plugs. Um, if you've ever had an older vehicle that didn't use a resistor plug, which is what the R is on the spark plug number, uh, they can interfere with radios and stuff like that uh, when the bike's running or the car's running or whatever goes as a spark plug. Um, so in Europe especially and in the UK we use resistor plugs which have the R on them and it's it's basically it's radio suppression right I had a query with the old plug I've got no idea what you can see because the screen's gone off um, this is exactly how the plug has come with no cap on the top um, and I had a quick look in the Kawasaki service manual the actual genuine one and it shows no cap on the top for these so um that's what we're going to go with i'm going to shove one in um we'll check i'll check the gap which should be i think 0 0.7 0 0.8 and um, we'll check the gap uh, they're usually pretty well pre-gap these nkgs or whatever they're called ngk i always get it wrong um yeah, it's a 10 mil thread it's a tiny tiny threaded plug um, but uh, the first thing to do is to fire up the compressor of potential explosion and blow out me holes <laughs> um, and just give this top a blow um, because cylinder three uh, was the rusty plug yeah I'm guessing the boot didn't seal properly and like when I washed it or something like that uh, it's just got in there and obviously rarely having the tank off because there's no need um, it's had time to rust so um, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to blow my holes out. <laughs> God, stop being so infantile and childish. Knob! Um, yeah, another thing I queried was that the electrodes on the new on the old plugs were like fine needle points. And if this is... I, I've got no idea if this is focusing because the screen's gone off. Um, but the, the actual electrode point on these is quite healthy. Uh, not massive, but healthy so we're going to gently put this plug down because you don't go throwing spark plugs about um, and then I will fire up the compressor which is extremely fucking noisy um, I serviced that in an earlier video as well yes um, you're all very talented and then I'll just blow all the crap out and then um, well, I'm going to test for spark on one of the leads because I've got a really weak spark out of the other spark plugs which obviously is not going to help and just see if we've got a nice beefy and that's biffy and robust spark from the new plugs so um i'll get set up and i'll do that I told you it was noisy
do that. Just get my torch. Right, I've blown my holes out. And uh, now I'm just going to get the torch and just make sure I've blown it out. I have no idea what you can see. Probably the window. Right. I did have a dedicated little torch here somewhere. But, you know. If in doubt, whip the phone out. Yeah, that's alright. Oh, that'll lap there. Better, better. Yeah, that's good, that's good, right. We can start putting plugs in. Now, what I do, and some people, oh, they can fill internet forums for weeks, is that I always put a little dab of anti seize on a spark plug because I'm the moron that has to get them out the next time. And, um, you know, Fortunately, fingers crossed, I've not had a spark plug um, break in an engine yet. Um, I know people that have, and it's, sometimes it can be a nightmare to get them out. Yada yada. So I always use a tiny little bit of anti seize uh, on the threads. Now, bear in mind that in uh, factory service managers and stuff like that, they don't mention using anti seize on spark plugs. Um, so the torque settings that they give. If you do use anti-seize, you've got to reduce by about 10% because anti-seize is also lubricant. Um, if in a factory manual or a Haynes manual or something like that, it tells you to put a thread seal on or anti-seize or something like that, uh, the torque value has already been calculated for it. So it's the correct torque value if it tells you to do it. Uh, this is just optionally. It's like putting anti-seize on brake calipers, stuff like that. Some people swear by it. Some people don't touch it. Uh, all depends on how often they're going to come apart what kind of environment you're in if you're in like a dusty sandy shitty environment say say if you live by the coast or somewhere like that it might not be a good idea to use it because if grit and stuff gets on it it stays there and it forms like a, an abrasive paste and it can make stuff worse so it depends where you are um i tend to do it out of habit to be honest um so yes so we'll crack on and we'll put some plugs in yes Smooth camera transition. Hello, and now a word from our channel's non sponsors. Today's beverage, wipe the lens. <laughs> Finpato. Hmm. Oh. oh, I do like a Vimto. Really do like a Vimto. Anyway, back to the case in hand. Let's get you over there. So you should be able to see the top of the engine. Should. So I'm going to start putting in the plugs of sparking. I'm just whipping them all out now. And then, you know, this is expert editing. You know, if it was professional, I would already have the spark plugs out. And uh, I'd be ready. I mean, I do watch some content creators uh, that um, obviously put a hell of a lot of time into um, you know editing pre-editing uh, pre-filming and all this lot I prefer mainly to show it as it is you know if we cock up we'll show that too anyway hello Right, out of shot is the anti C's. So what I'm going to do, just one at a time, is put a little, little dub of shit on. You only need a little bit around the threads. I mean, that's it. That's literally all I put on because the thread will carry it. And then shove me sparking plug in the tool. Uh, I have actually got a proper Kawasaki toolkit tool to do this. I'm just going to gently, this is probably going to fall in. Yeah, it has. Um, always, always, always start a spark plug off by hand. And always do the initial tightening by hand. There you go. That's just nipped up. Now what I'm going to do is put them all in 
Ooh, that's a spider's nest. Uh, put them all in, um, and then basically I give them a quarter turn. It says in the manual there's something like 14 foot pounds. I'm just going to guess it. I literally hand tight it and give it about a, a quarter to a half a turn, depending on how it feels. They certainly don't need to be any tighter than that. So I need a little bit of shit. Hi kids, what did you do today? Well, today, oh, another little tip for getting spark plugs out if you struggle, if they're like recessed like um, a lot of water cooled motorbikes are, air cooled, you, you can tend to get to the plugs, but obviously water cooled has the water jacket and they tend to be more recessed, get on with the gym, shut up, um, is um, a little length of garden hose will help you uh, put them in and take them out once you've undone them. If you can't, um, I grab mine with a magnet, undo it and grab it with a magnet. This is thrilling. Tell us Jim, what exciting content are you going to give us today? Well, you're going to watch a fat idiot put spark plugs in. I've got a little debate which will probably wind Mr. Boaty up of Mustard and Boaty do Facebook, Mustard and Boaty do Cars, uh, the £500 cheap car challenge, et al. Isn't that an airline? <laughs> now, Mr. Boaty cooks up some wonderful looking meals. Uh, mainly sort of a, a Nepalese Asian bent, let's say. Although he does do a rather delicious looking Sunday roast. But um, I had super noodles last night, and to be quite honest, uh, people can get quite snobby about super noodles. But uh, my expert fat bloke opinion is they're really not as tasty as a pot noodle. What are your opinions? Now I know that I'll wind Mr. Boaty up because he's basically going to call me a, a peasant ignoramus for using super noodles or pot noodles because <laughs> he does the real deal. So there we go. Um, sparking plugs are in and I'm actually I'm going to tighten them up with this as well. So what I've done is I've literally just hand tight and then let's just get this orientated i'm literally going to give it between a quarter and a half turn and you do it by feel that's plenty that's plenty you do not want to grill these in because these are obviously going into an alley head And you know, if your bike's a keeper and stuff like that, nine times out of ten it's you that's going to be getting them out again. I mean, I have seen people put spark plugs in and take them out with impact guns. Um, you know, I do like an impact gun, but it's a big no-no in my book. Right, I've sprayed some water dispersant up the leads. Fortunately, all these plug caps are numbered. Generally, one coil on an inline four will do uh, plugs one and four and two and three. Right. That's good. So you can hear when they seat well, basically. There we go. See how you can hear it? There's, in the cap, there's obviously the uh, I'm going to call it a receiver at the end of the wire. It's got a name like, I don't know, fucking cap. Um, and in that, there's a bit of springy wire, which is what you hear catching the threads. And on some applications, especially older bikes, um, you'll have to put the little bobble on top of the spark plug. There we go. But they're all, they're all seated nicely. And the petrol I got for the pump um, ah, 
I've got a full can, no expense spared, is um, to top Nibbler's tank up as well because he's a bit low. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it will start better. What I'm going to do next is reinstall the tank, um, reattach the fuel line and um, obviously we've then got to wait for the float bowls to um, fill. Got a little bit of oil around that fastener there. I'll tell you what though, oil does a good job of making it shiny. Um, I think at some point we're probably going to have to replace the, uh, the gasket at the top here. Um, if you get oil in your plug wells, quite often um, people automatically sort of think oh shit piston rings or something like that and it's blown a bit of oil up uh, nine times out of ten it will be the seals in the cover usually the gasket is you usually how it works is you'll get an outer gasket um, and then you'll get quite often their individual little button gaskets for these bolts and then you'll get gaskets for the spark plug holes as well and it's those that go because uh, obviously there's crankcase pressure in here and it doesn't take much for them to just weep past and just trickle a little bit in the plug hole so if you see oil in your plug holes it's not the end of the world right switch you off right as you can see tanks back on now we're going to do I drip a bit of juice in it and see if she'll start up so bear with me a moment and before you ask the bear's name is uh, Gerald I always say that if somebody says well bear with me I'll say what you called the bear a lot of people don't get it and I've always found it hilarious right I'm just playing with my spout do you know what these are uh... blown plastic Fuel cans are all very well, but I've never met one that didn't leak. Really, Jim, do you meet a lot of petrol cans? Ooh, my door's just flew open, which is alright because I'm going to open it in a minute. When we fire this up. I can actually see fuel in the tank. There we go. Quite impressed with that, didn't spill any. That's the first for everything. ZX10 tapes to prime its carburetors and I've got a feeling we might run down the battery before we get to start the bike but living out so I'm just going to move you aside a bit. I've just opened the doors for a bit of ventilation. Oh, let's, go. Oh, no, let's do something different. Let's go here. Yes. Yeah. There you go. I'm sure you can still see. Talk shit if you can't. Note to self, it helps to turn the fuel on. 
Right, I'm going to get my little booster pack, put that on the battery, and uh, we'll go from there. So for the few minutes it's going to take me, I'm going to turn you off. Oh you cunt, I never press record. I've just spent five minutes talking to the camera and realised I hadn't pressed record. Come on, you bugger. Oh my god, what have I just done? Did I just press record then? Did I just burp on film? How unprofessional of me. Right, hello and welcome again to Millionaire Mansions. Oh, hang on. Um, no, the shed. Right, one has been investigating the no start issue with the nibbler. And as you're about to see, surgery has commenced. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Right then. Um, we had good spark and I was suspicious that it was getting no fuel so uh, whilst cranking I shone a torch through the old gubbins so I could see the fuel filter and stuff like that because normally when the bike's running and stuff like that you can see the fuel going through the filter which is currently on the, fl on the floor just there um, nothing was happening so I did the old power to ground and all that bollocks on the pump and the pump was getting power but not doing anything with it. Now I've sprayed some Uzzestad, some stat you bastard, down the intakes and the bike fired straight off. So it was a fuel issue because obviously if we've got compression and we've got fuel and we've got sparkage an engine will run, usually. Of course you don't need spark on a diesel. Um, so I knew it was a fuel issue. Um, so I checked the flow on the tap and all that lot. All good. Excuse me. I'm going to burp because I've just had a swig of Vimto. Uh. Highly professional and I'm glad uh, I, and I hope that you appreciate the effort that went into that. Anyway. Um, so yeah. I thought I'll have a look at the fuel pump. So the fuel pump sits under the carbotinkles, so I've had to pull the carbotinkles. Um, I've never had any problem refitting these carbotinkles. A lot of people do have issues because their rubbers <laughs> have gone hard. And what I do, if I get a hot... <laughs> I can't even say it without keeping a straight face. If I, <laughs> if I have a rubber that's gone hard... <sighs> I've... <laughs> I've got some um, up there somewhere in the shelf of shite. I've got some, I believe it's called winter green oil. And basically it's, um, I'm sure it's called winter, I've probably got the fucking name wrong. It's called winter green oil. And it's suspended in alky wall. And what happens is if you drop your rubber bits in it, like carb rubbers um, and airbox rubbers, uh, and just soak them. You know, I, I soak them for a couple of days. And what happens is the alcohol will draw the oil into the rubber and make it supple again. <laughs> and then um, obviously you take the parts out and you leave them to air dry for a couple of days. And they'll be nice and supple and lovely. And I've restored some, um, plenty of carb rubbers doing that. Never had an issue. So anyway, boys and girls. Would you like to know what a fucked ZX10 fuel pump looks like? Oh, sorry, I can't say fucked. I know, we'll, ju we'll just tick the not made for kids box like we usually do. Why would I deliberately make a video for children? I suppose you're all big kids. Right, let's go in the other shed because I have already dismantled the other pump. And I dropped it on the slab outside. So I've already broke some of it anyway, but it was buggered anyway. Crossed my fart and hope to die. So let's uh, let's go into the shed and have a look. Hello, children. Welcome to Jim's World of Wonder. 
nope, it's not that. Well, I do. I wonder what I'm doing half the time. Anyway, today's beverage is Vimto again. That's probably what's been making me burp so professionally. Right, um, I might put the camera down near my uh, moobs uh, so you can have a good look at this pump, which you can see. Um, yes, um, I was doing power to ground testing and stuff like that. So uh, this lid sits on the on the back here, and you you can just pop it off and reglue it back on, basically. But that's the little circuitry and I tried all the powers and grounds and all this lot and you can feel the pump working if you um, put your hand around the shaft and then turn it on you can actually feel it working and um, I didn't actually know it was a diaphragm pump I didn't know whether it was um, a geared pump or whatever but it's a diaphragm pump and basically there's an electromagnet in here let's get you down here so you're close to the net action well, great video of my boobs. Anyway, there's an electromagnet in here, which is obviously controlled by the circuitry. So when you thumb the starter and the bike's running, this will pulse, and this will pulse like that. All right, they've got the idea. Now you need to go crazy. I'm trying to get a fucking tune out of it. Anyway, behind here is there's a washer and there's another like a ceiling ring. Um, stop the petrol going in here basically the petrol only goes in the top part I have bent those um, and this is the top part and so it will suck fuel in one end and shove it out the other with the action of that diaphragm um, very common type of pump diaphragm pump but uh, what I was going to do was um, see if I've got anything small enough to shove that out I don't even know what I'm doing to be honest which is which is normal if you're used to this channel. Oh yeah, there you go, it's coming. All right, Percy pliers. Jim, do you name all your tools? Yeah, only the one. Right, come on, oh, I've got to bend. This is attached to the top by. It basically just sandwiches together with a seal, and then these are peened over. And that's it. There is only ever fuel in this bit. This bit. So I'm just going to whack a few of these back. Try not to give myself a blood blister doing it like I normally do. When I'm working with pliers. Oh, fuck. I didn't swear. I did not say fuck. Jim, what happened to your hands today? Are you... Are you due back on the bloody mothership for a reset? Oh, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> well, at this point, you know you're not tuning in to watch a professional video, so, you know. You get what you pay for and you lot don't pay, so, you know. <laughs> Oh dear, that comes out. Oh yeah. It'll be out. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can really dance. It's coming. I said that last time. I'll tell you what. There's a fair bit of shite coming out. Mind you, the fuel system, all the carbs and stuff were absolutely full of shit uh, when I got the bike. And I did clean it out at the time. And I swilled loads and loads of clean petrol through the pump and, you know. But without fully disassembling something like this, which I don't suppose it's a service item, um... You're never going to get all the crap out, which is why we fit the filter. But if the crap's already in the pump, because over its lifetime somebody may have run it without a filter or something, you never know. Oh, you motherfucker. Oh, I, I, didn't, I didn't swear. I don't swear. I'm a good Christian, I don't swear. I rape choir boys and nuns, but I don't swear. I wonder. 
I wonder if I get my big thrutting stick, which just happened to be in this shed for no reason whatsoever. Bloody hell, crap that's coming out of that. Let's see, all that has just come out of the pump. They look like little mouse turds. There we go. Hooray! Oh, blimey. So there you go, there's the other, there's the inside of the pump. You see there is a bit of crap in there. Yeah, there's a bit of shite in there and that will get up into the um, Carby Tinkle Jets. Yeah. There you go, there is a bit of crap in there. So it just shows that the filter does not catch everything. So get all this shit together and see how much came out. Jesus, it's quite a bit, and it is. It's it's just like the crap that was in the float bowls when I first got the bike. If you think all this, this must be excellent. I don't even know whether you can even see that. All that has just fell out the pump. Now the pump's died. I mean, it's proper dive. Um, this is not pumping. It's getting voltage, but it ain't doing out with it. So I am suspecting that the electronicals are completely foobar. Oh, did I bring a small craft head screwdriver? Oh, look. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me that this, this, all that crap in the pump, which must have been doing the rounds. Um, so it doesn't surprise me. But, uh, let's get the screwdrivers out. Just take that out. And I'm guessing there might be another one. Is there another one? I've got no idea what I'm doing as usual. Which is great. That's how I like it. Alright, let's peel that back. Oh, there you go. Let's show the people properly. They pay good money to see this. Actually, they don't. <laughs> Why should you? Um, yes. Uh, you, you can always slip me the price of a coffee on Patreon or something like that, so you know I wouldn't be complaining. So let's see. Oh, it's a contact breaker point by the looks of it. I've got no idea if you can see this. Let's just. Ah, oh, stinks. Oh, that does smell. Oh, this electric smell of shit. Uh, yes, there is a breaker point there. Look, there's a there is like a set of points just there. Look, can you see it? I hope that camera's focusing. Otherwise, you take the right shit view. So that's obviously what makes contact or makes it run. Is there is a contact? Uh, there's a set of points. So it's a bit like a relay sort of thing. Interesting. 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 I've just put the fucking screwdriver on the right. Oh, Jim, stop swearing. There might be a child's bike outside. Well, we may as well tear it all the way down. Let's try and get this screw out without... Uh, I don't know, that need, that need the bigger one. I was about to say, get the screw out without stabbing myself, but it was looking imminent that I was going to. Good set of screwdrivers, this silver line. Had them a few years, and they're all insulated for electronical works. But I've got a funny feeling this might be a JIS. I do like a deep 
delve, don't you? I just like to know how stuff works. I mean, if it's if it's buggered, you know, and the sake of a replacement is the price of a couple of kebabs or something. Yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. So yeah. So that contact, I think, would have energised. Yeah, would have worked a bit like, um, you know, a relay. A relay is basically a miniature electromagnet that, when it's energised, will pull or push a contact. So that's all that did. But that wasn't getting any power. Well, there's power going to this, but it wasn't going any further. So I'm guessing something on the circuit board shut itself. Nice. Well, I don't think we need to strip that down anymore. Because to be honest, I don't know how. <laughs> um, yes, 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 yes. There's no, there's no obvious way. Somebody's obvious. Somebody's probably done it by now, anyway. But all, all that's going to be is a winding inside, which gets energised, and when it's energised, and released, energised and released, energised and released, it pumps the fuel. So I mean, the contacts might have gone. I think it's circuit board because the power wasn't getting past it but also you can see now it's been apart and dried look how much shit you on 5000 is in the pump won't take much will it and that's running with a filter yeah anyway there are people on the forums that run just a fuel line to the fuel tap uh, via a filter up into the carbon core. Now the best way to do it is with a filter and it's with a dual tapered end filter which we've all seen it's like a, a common fuel bike filter. A fuel bike filter. Can you use English man? Right it's a common fuel filter used on bikes. See it wasn't difficult was it? And you'll have like an 8mm bore for the first bit and a 6mm bore for the second bit. Now I think the hose that goes from the carby tinkles to the filter was 6mm but the hose that goes to the fuel tap is an 8mm. Don't quote me on it but I know they're different sizes. So if we get a new filter for the sake of 4 quid, 4 5 quid, um, I've got 8mm holes, I've got 6mm holes. So we can make up a bit of hose and I will just run a filter from the tank to the carburetor. Now somebody on one of the forums says you can't do that because the fuel level is below the carburetors. It isn't. If you look at your ZX10 where the position of the fuel tap is, you're not draining any fuel below that tap. Okay? Uh, and the tap is above the float bowls. It's, it's about halfway up the carburetors at least. Um, and as long as there's enough fuel in the tank, it will gravity feed up to the carbs. Just the weight of the fuel will it will level itself out basically. Um, I guess they only put a pump in there because the fuel uh, tap doesn't have a prime position like it does on GPZ9s and stuff like that. And I used to know people that used to flood their carbs over because they used to uh, they used to leave it on prime. Mm. Beverage, waste a few more seconds of your life. So yeah, so I'm going to try that first. I'm just going to run a direct line, uh, not the insurance company. To the carbon tinkles from the fuel tank and I'll probably do that sometime tomorrow. So that's it for now. ta -ra. Oh yeah, thanks for liking and subscribing. Um, I've got a load more subscribers. I think we're at 600 and something at the minute. Don't know. So uh, yeah, we'll carry on. Crack on. More madness to come later. <laughs>